Cesar Garcia and his wife Claudia have lived in this home in the desert town of Coachella, California for more than 13 years. They've raised three kids there, and Claudia runs an at-home daycare out of the house. But three years ago, they made a mistake that could cost them their home and livelihood. When converting their back porch into a TV room, they neglected to get a building permit from the city. You know, the person I hire, you know, they do it under the codes, only with no permit from the city of Coachella. Garcia ignored early warnings from the city. Then, a team of inspectors showed up unannounced. He pleaded guilty in court, paid a $900 fine, and demolished the structure as ordered by the judge. Then, he got the proper permit before rebuilding and upgrading it into a room for the daycare. He thought the issue was resolved, but six months later, a bill arrived for $26,000. As the local newspaper, The Desert Sun, first reported, the city of Coachella is holding Garcia responsible for paying the cost of his own prosecution. The city had hired the private law firm Silver and Wright to prosecute Garcia. The firm promised the city that its work would be cost-neutral or even revenue-producing. Garcia, who works as a grocery store manager about an hour and a half from his home, isn't the only building code violator to receive an unexpected bill. Six months after Ramona Morales paid a $250 fine because one of her tenants was illegally housing chickens, Silver and Wright invoiced her for $5,600. A woman in the neighboring town of Indio, who was cited for putting up illegal Halloween decorations, was charged $2,600. And another family received a bill for $18,500 after pleading guilty to having a broken garage door and an overgrown lawn. As of November 2017, Silver and Wright had collected more than $122,000 in code enforcement fees from dozens of residents in an area in which the median annual household income is about $36,000. After Garcia received his bill, he appealed. That drove it up another five grand. Since Garcia couldn't afford to pay $21,000 in prosecutors' fees within a month, the city put a lien on his house. It was like you're gonna lose your house because you're not paying 21,000. It's my house, it's where I live, it's where we feel safety here. Silver and Wright has a business model that's premised on cost recovery. They go around to these cities and they say, hey, we can get you 90% of your fees or 100% of your fees back. Jeffrey Redfern is an attorney with the nonprofit Institute for Justice, which has filed a class action lawsuit on behalf of Garcia and others charged with the cost of their own prosecution. This is appealing to the cities because they figured, hey, if they can do this work for free, that's great. The problem is that once the law firm took over, they have an incentive to prosecute cases in a complicated and expensive manner so as to drive up the fees that they can collect from the defendants. Callahan and Blaine is known and respected as one of the leading insurance law firms in the nation. Attorney Edward Susalik is representing Silver and Wright in the lawsuit. When situations like this arise, the taxpayers of the city have to pay for this. It's absolutely a fair outcome because otherwise, who pays that $26,000? It's the good citizens of the city. The lawsuit claims that the financial arrangement violates both the due process clause of the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution and the California State Constitution, which guarantee the right to a neutral prosecutor without financial or personal stake in the case. Whether we're talking about civil asset forfeiture or fines and fees or you know this kind of outsourcing to a private law firm, um, it's all really the same thing. Uh, we call it policing for profit. It's turning the criminal justice system into a tool for raising revenue. That is a naive and false description. Uh, this is a, a city attorney, Silver and Wright, working to prosecute laws for the city. Uh, they prosecuted over 150 people. Mm -hmm for uh, code violations, nuisance abatement, nuisance abatement. They made the city a safe and healthy place to live. Garcia and the other plaintiffs allege that Silver and Wright waited six months before billing them because after six months, they were no longer allowed to withdraw their guilty pleas, which limits their ability to protest the fees. Is that an intentional strategy on behalf of Silver and Wright? Absolutely not. Was he ever informed when he was pleading guilty that he was going to have to pay th tens of thousands of dollars of legal fees for his own prosecution? 
Well, it is certainly my understanding that the people, when they plead guilty, they have this, uh, that they have this knowledge and will depose him thoroughly on this issue. Any criminal defendant, it's presumed that they know the law. I mean, it's not incumbent upon the police or the judge or the prosecutor or the city to tell a criminal defendant uh, what the laws are. So what does the law say about charging plaintiffs for their own prosecution? Garcia and the other plaintiffs allege that Silver and Wright aggressively pushed city officials to change the law to allow just that. Before Silver and Wright was hired, there wasn't an ordinance on the books allowing for cost recovery in these nuisance cases. The cities put these ordinances on the books because Silver and Wright asked them to do so. One partner at Silver and Wright is also a vice president of the California Association of Code Enforcement Officers, a lobbying organization that works on this issue, helping municipalities rewrite their administrative codes. Is that a conflict of interest? Well, first off, uh, they don't profit from the prosecution of the laws, okay? They are, they are city attorneys who work for the cities. They're told... And they get they, paid for that work, correct? They do many, many different tasks and responsibilities for these cities. They're, it's called a city attorney. You handle many different functions, and you're paid by the hour. In some ways, we have a perfect storm for abuse right now. We have a huge number of very vague laws, lots of them criminal. Prosecutors who have almost total discretion to decide how to enforce these laws, they can go after almost anyone they want. If they're really motivated, they could find things wrong with my house or your house. You have the people with that discretion over very vague, broad laws who have an interest in getting your money. At the very least, those people should be neutral. Outrage over Garcia's story led to the passage of a new law in California prohibiting cities from charging defendants for their own criminal prosecution. But it doesn't retroactively absolve Garcia of his debt, and the lawsuit is also moving forward to set a legal precedent that will make other state courts less likely to tolerate this practice. If we win this case, I think it will go a long way towards establishing standards of prosecutorial neutrality. The people who started writing these codes never imagined that they would be giving discretion to enforce them to people who would then make money off of them. As for Garcia, he says the entire ordeal has put his family's life on hold. I still worry about losing my house because the stuff is not done. It's, you know, we. I'm still thinking about, you know, those 31,000 